Tesla Model 3's use of new material has spurred competition for an energy-efficient alternative. Abundant and easily processed silicon has been the material of choice for decades in the semiconductor industry, but electric vehicles are helping chip away at its dominance in the pursuit of energy efficiency. Tesla has been a catalyst for this change. The United States automaker became the first to use silicon carbide chips in a mass-produced vehicle, incorporating them into some of its Model 3s. This move gave the power-saving material a boost of momentum in the electric vehicle supply chain with ramifications for the entire chip industry. Because the Tesla Model 3's main driver uses all silicon carbide modules, it has paved the path for silicon carbide's widespread deployment. Model 3 has sold approximately 1 million vehicles globally and has been named the world's best-selling model for three years in a row, demonstrating that silicon carbide power components in electric vehicles have no limitations in terms of innovation, industry, or marketplace. The higher performance of silicon carbide modules can enhance the car's cruising range by 5 to 10 percent, as well as make it speed faster, charge faster with more power savings, but the price might be somewhat high. The silicon carbide industry's bottleneck could be attributed to the high cost of silicon carbide substrates. With the introduction of Tesla Model 3 back in 2018, Tesla became the first to utilize ST Microelectronics SIC metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistors, MOSFETs, and in house inverter design. Beyond the usage of SIC packages, there are several other advances in the overall design, but this is the most important. Because of this, the inverter's overall weight, 4.8 kgs, is less than half that of the 2019 Nissan Leaf, 11.15 kgs, and more than a third less than that of the Jaguar I-Pace, 8.23 kgs, both of which employ CIGBT inverters and off-the-shelf parts. The cost has been the main obstacle to seek MOSFETs and other enabling materials in power module packages, as it has been with any growing technology. However, Tesla appears to have addressed this as well. In just three years, the cost of its inverter has dropped dramatically. Besides Tesla Model 3, silicon carbide technology is possibly used by dozens of automotive manufacturers. However, silicon carbide has only about a 5% penetration rate in the automobile power device industry. Many device manufacturers, including Wolfspeed, Infineon, ROM, on Semiconductor and others work with Tier 1 automakers. After all, this is a potentially huge cake, worth tens of billions of dollars per year, and no one wants to miss it. Silicon carbide chip manufacturers have reached a position where they are competing with one another. Chip makers have previously collaborated to grow the silicon carbide business, but they have now reached a point where they are competing with one another. The market for silicon carbide chips is expected to rise six times by 2026 compared to 2020. According to some estimates, the SIC chip market is expected to grow to $4.48 billion as a result of this. However, much of this would depend on whether SIC chip production costs could be cut sufficiently, as SIC chips are still more expensive than regular silicon chips today. The gap between silicon and SIC chips, on the other hand, has been closing. Silicon carbide's use will be long-lasting, and its market penetration rate is expected to reach 50% around 2030 or 2035, depending on the pace of fall in silicon carbide's prices. As a result, silicon carbide and silicon will coexist for a long period of time in automobiles. After the price of silicon carbide reduces to a certain point, it will enter the intermediate and low-end automotive market, which has the most capacity. It is beneficial to have a long penetration cycle. This can offer the electric vehicle industry more time to develop, while also giving latecomers more time and opportunities to catch up to the first movers, facilitating the establishment of a relatively healthy and pleasant market rivalry. While the chip production and overall market are not as much under Tesla's control at the moment, one thing is for sure that Tesla has full control of, and we're talking about Tesla superchargers. Tesla's supercharger installations were originally manufactured in Fremont, California. The automaker transferred the production to Gigafactory New York, where it also produces solar roof tiles, with the debut of the supercharger V3 last year. 
Tesla was able to increase the production as a result of the shift, which allowed it to expand the network with more powerful supercharger V3 stations. Tesla increased deployment in 2020 and installed the 20,000th supercharger in the network. We learned last year that Tesla was intending to create a plant in China to produce supercharger stations. The Shanghai Supercharger Factory, one of Tesla's latest projects, was just completed and is now ready to scale up. Tesla has announced that the plant had been officially put into production with the strong support from Shanghai government officials at all levels, representing the industry-leading third-generation supercharging. Testing of all the equipment and assembly lines will go on until September the 25th, which is the next step before the factory is completely operational. Following that, acceptance testing will commence on September the 26th and go up until October the 30th. Tesla intends to deploy thousands of superchargers in China to assist its development, and the plant will ultimately produce them. Tesla's not slowing down its ambitions to extend the supercharger network in any case. Now that the new Shanghai facility is up and running, the growth is set to continue at a breakneck pace. The project took less than half a year from its inception back in August of 2020 to its official production. According to some reports, the new facility would be able to create up to 10,000 supercharging stalls every year. The facility first opened its doors back in February of 2021, intending to produce 10,000 V3 to 150 kilowatt supercharging stalls every year. It would be enough for 1,000 stations if each station had an average of 10 booths. The figures are applicable for a 22-hour shift 300 days a year. In China, there are now around 900 Tesla supercharging stations and over 7,000 stalls. This number may rapidly rise with the addition of the new facility. Tesla plans to sell superchargers from China to other nations as well, or at the very least, to Asia. Tesla has over 3,000 supercharging stations throughout the world, 2,966 with 26,900 individual connectors as of the end of the second quarter of 2021. A 15-minute charge with the new supercharger can extend the driving range of Tesla automobiles by 250 kilometers. Furthermore, the facility is a large piece of infrastructure that offers Tesla a distinct edge over its competitors that must rely on generic, fast-charging networks that aren't always as handy or reliable. Tesla is expected to speed up the network's distribution and offer it to other EVs in the near future thanks to an app function that will unlock the charging access. According to numerous specifications, Tesla may very soon offer its charging stations to first non-Tesla EVs. Tesla's working on a dynamic pricing system that will take into account not just the amount of energy used, but also the amount of electricity used to charge the vehicle, because the time of occupying a stall is also very valuable. Then, there is the issue of peak and off-peak hours. Only time will tell how competitive this offer is and how it will affect the charging industry as a whole. When you consider that Tesla only recently exceeded 20,000 supercharger stalls deployed after eight years of constructing the network, it is reasonable to conclude that the new facility will significantly speed the supercharger network's expansion. In the realm of car charging, things are changing. Non-Tesla drivers may soon be able to also use Tesla's supercharging network. Tesla would not be insane not to take advantage of some of that cash if it becomes available. If non-Tesla drivers can use the network, Tesla will need to build even more superchargers to keep Tesla customers from being squeezed out. When compared to other production lines, the supercharger plant is very modest by Tesla standards, measuring only 54,000 square feet. If the Tesla assembly line continues to expand at its current rate, the company will be able to dominate the global EV charging market in a few years. Despite the fact that the supercharger network is not designed to be a significant profit center, it may easily pay for itself. Tesla's plans for EV charging will be intriguing to watch. Make sure to check out one of the videos shown on your screen right now. We post videos daily, so feel free to subscribe and stay up to date on all the most recent news and updates.